Many of the techniques described in this video can be dangerous or even fatal. Please do your own research and consult a medical professional before implementing any of these techniques. This video is merely a summary of what I found to be helpful in improving the speed and ease with which I learn. It is not intended as medical advice. To an extent much greater than most people realize, our daily routine and habits influence our mood, level of energy, memory, and ability to focus. To accomplish any worthwhile goal, it is imperative to pay attention to how the simple, repetitive, and easily overlooked aspects of our daily lives influence our productivity and mood. In other words, we must bring simple, tangible things of our daily lives under our control before we begin thinking about more abstract solutions to our problems. When applied to language learning, this means that it doesn't matter what textbook or method you use if you haven't first maximized your potential to focus on and remember what you are using. The strategies outlined here are aimed at increasing mental focus and acuity, mostly through increasing the production of brain-derived neurotropic factor and testosterone. Brain-derived neurotropic factor, or BDNF, is responsible for protecting existing neurons and for encouraging the growth of new neurons and connections between neurons, while testosterone increases drive, focus, and motivation. The speed of my own personal language learning has increased at least fivefold to the disciplined implementation of these techniques. I will briefly discuss each technique now, but will release in-depth videos on each topic in the future. The first technique is daily fasting, that is, a period of each day during which you consume nothing but water. This period should be at least 14 hours, but ideally will be 16 to 23 hours. I fast for 23 hours daily and eat for one hour. Contrary to common logic, fasting increases rather than decreases mental acuity. When the body receives no calories, it actually supplies the brain and muscles with more energy than usual as a way to ensure that we will find something to eat. It is not an evolutionarily efficient strategy to shut off the brain at the exact moment when we need it the most. On the contrary, brain activity slows after the consumption of food as energy is directed away from other processes and to the digestive system. The increased energy during fasting is derived mostly from stored adipose or fat tissue and through a process called autophagy by which the body consumes old and worn out cells for energy and replaces them with new cells. During the fasting period, once the glucose stored in your muscles and liver is used up, the body enters a state of ketosis, producing ketones in the liver. Ketones are an alternate form of fuel for the body and the preferred form of fuel for the brain and heart. Additionally, since fasting is a stress and challenge to the brain, the brain responds by strengthening and protecting itself. Levels of BDNF and the number of mitochondria in your brain cells increase, allowing each cell to produce more energy. Over time, this drastically increases the speed of learning and memory. Therefore, in order to improve brain function, I found it best to eat one meal per day, late in the day, after I've already done every mentally difficult task for the day. This way, I can spend the majority of the day in a state of ketosis. If one eats three or four meals per day, the body will never deplete its glycogen stores, will never enter ketosis, and will always be subject to severe variations in energy levels throughout the course of the day. The second technique is extended fasting, that is longer than 24 hours. The longer one fasts, the more the body and brain rely on ketones. Longer fasts also result in even higher levels of BDNF, higher levels of human growth hormone, and increased energy and sense of well-being, as well as focus. The evolutionary reason for this is the same as above. The body and the brain are preparing you for the intense challenge of finding or hunting for food in a period of scarcity, and therefore give you more energy and focus for any task. I like to do a 3 day fast at least once each month, and have gone as long as 10 days without anything but water. But depending on how much stored adipose you have, you can go even farther. One pound of fat is about enough to sustain an adult male for a little more than a day. Therefore, a very lean male at 160 or 170 pounds with 10% body fat should still be able to fast without a problem for over two weeks. The world record for the longest fast is well over a year and was completed by a severely obese man who had a lot of stored energy to use. Cyclic fasting and a very low meal frequency play an important role in protecting the brain and increasing its capacity for learning. When I do eat, however, a meal that is high in fat, moderate in protein, and very low in carbohydrates is ideal. This is because I want my meal to spike my insulin as little as possible, and I want as little glycogen as possible to be stored in my muscles and liver, so that I can more quickly re-enter a state of ketosis. I stick to good vegetal fats such as avocados, olive oil, and macadamia nuts, which have the additional benefit of increasing levels of testosterone. I eat a lot of prebiotic fiber from vegetables so that I feel full and encourage the growth of healthy gut bacteria, bacteria which, it is now known, communicate directly with the brain. Eating a meal high in fat is also important because it makes fasting easier. If I consume a lot of carbohydrates, I will feel a crash and sensation of painful hunger the next day as my glycogen stores near depletion. There are a number of beneficial supplements that can increase brain function. Non-caloric supplements include black coffee and tea, 
both of which in moderation increase focus and energy and independently promote BDNF. MCT oil and coconut oil can be taken during the day together with coffee to help ease into fasting, but this practice should be eliminated as soon as possible and these oils should be consumed only during the eating period. Finally, lion's mane mushrooms have been shown to improve memory and learning capacity by raising levels of BDNF. An important theme here is that stresses to the body tend to improve cognitive function. Cold exposure is no exception, which has been shown to increase levels of BDNF. Also, it has the obvious effect of waking you up and making you hyper alert. I take daily cold showers and weekly ice baths. Additionally, cold exposure psychologically speaking is beneficial for language learning. If you have the focus and determination to stand in a freezing shower for 10 to 15 minutes, you certainly have the ability to focus on German for at least double the time. Extreme cold exposure can be dangerous and even fatal, and resistance to the cold must be developed gradually over a long time. Meditation is another technique which has been proven to increase focus and concentration and also promote the production of BDNF. Practicing what is sometimes called mindfulness allows you to better deal with distraction during your study time. It also, like cold exposure, promotes discipline and perseverance, necessary qualities for successful language learning. Hypoxia or oxygen deprivation, being as it is a stress to the brain, will also increase levels of BDNF and ultimately create a more efficient and more powerful brain. I use the Wim Hof breathing method, which involves 30 to 40 deep inhalations, followed by a complete exhale, which you hold for as long as possible. Using this method, I can last for two to three minutes without oxygen. Be very careful with this method as it can be dangerous. Please experiment at your own risk and thoroughly research the method before trying it. Exercise increases BDNF for much the same reason that fasting does. It is a stress to the body and brain and quickly depletes the body's level of circulating sugar and thus allows the body to enter a state of ketosis more quickly. All forms of exercise are beneficial for brain health, but heavy weight lifting with a focus on developing neuromuscular strength has the added benefit of increasing human growth hormone and testosterone, which in turn increases focus and drive. I like to focus on the main power lifting movements, especially the deadlift. Finally, getting adequate sun exposure each day is vital for health and especially brain health. Exposure to the sun not only increases BDNF and learning potential, but also raises your mood and therefore increases potential for self-discipline and control.